I'm Casey. I'm an addict. Casey. Grateful, man. Um, I'm grateful to be up here, man. Uh, grateful to see my pop celebrating 48 years, man. It's a long time. Uh, uh, one thing I really wanted to do, uh, Tyler K. Is Tyler K at the front door still? Is he, is he greeting people? Can you holler at him to come in? Can we give him a round of applause real quick, man? Hey, it, it, it's a fucking miracle that dude's here, man. That's the truth. It's a miracle, man. And a, and a lot of people are safer that he's in this room. You know what I'm talking about? I appreciate you, man. And Eric S., can you stand up real quick? Let's give this guy a round of applause, man. Chris, last one. One more. Here we go. And I say that, man, because these are some of the newcomers that, that are battling. I've watched them through the process, man. I can tell you, I've seen Eric, man, like dying. Paramedics showing up day after day after day, you know, going through what he went through, man. And, and I worked in a program that helped a lot of guys and a lot of women. And, uh, and this dude would catch the bus or walk to get to anywhere he needed to go, man. And I would have perfectly healthy individuals that wouldn't go anywhere without a ride. Um, without someone holding their hand, taking them to the bus, riding on the bus with them, picking them up in a car, throwing them on their back, running to the next bus stop. And this dude was, 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 was dying, man, you know, every day. And, and it, it brought hope, man, that, that men and women are still doing this thing, putting in work. Um, so my clean date's January 22nd, 2015. They got me a record. Oh, and Harrison, they didn't ask you to speak because it was on being humble was the topic, big dog. I'll throw that out there real quick, man. Uh, I, I will say something, man. Uh, I'm grateful to be up here, man. I'm grateful that you guys asked me. Um, it's been a while, man, since I spoke. So I got a whole bunch of kids. I just had a baby. Um, I coach baseball with my kids. I coach football with my kids. I got five kids right now. I uh, haven't been attending the home group until football season ended. So I, I felt like I didn't have a message, man. You know, I'm like, damn, they're asking me to speak. And I'm a cup here, and I'm going to have nothing good to say, and someone's going to get loaded. And my first thought was, just blame DeAndre, man. <laughs> He's used to getting blamed for everything anyways, man. Blame him for putting me up here. I'm sure he had a part in it. Uh, that's a joke, man. We got to have fun in recovery. I hope you guys are here having fun, man. I don't know what your life looks like today, but when I first got clean, man, it was fucked up. You know, who I was and who I thought I was was fucked up and it's different, man. So I'm going to read a little bit out of this literature because this is where the program's at. And if you're in this room, man, and you're mistaken about where the program's at. I'm gonna tell you right now, man, it's in the literature and it's what you do with that literature. There's a whole bunch about what you can do, where you come from, where you are, how we can help, steps, traditions. What you hear that comes out of my mouth after I read this literature, man, is my experience, right? It's my perception. When you come to the rooms, man, and you hear people talking, it's their perception of what they think it is. Read the literature, man. Get familiar with it. And that's how it goes, man. Because people come to these rooms all the time and they hear a whole bunch of information of what somebody thinks the program's about and they run the fuck out of the rooms. You know, we want to tell them all the time, like, it ain't better out there. Just come. Man, people say the most outlandish shit in meetings, man. Please just show up, read the literature. You got the same information and go from there. But if you're showing up and you ain't reading literature, what do they say? Loitering with the intent to recover? You're a spectator and the deadliest spectator sport known to man. You know what I'm talking about? If you're sitting back spectating and watching people recover, you could die, man. You know, this is the first meeting I've done since my, 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 my brother and my best friend had passed away. Um, first meeting I've done, man, and the first time I first speaker meeting I've done, it came up here and shared. You know, and what I want to say, man, is if you're hurting and you're scared to talk about it, man, please pick up the phone, man. If you're on the phone telling people, man, it's going to be all right, man, I'm all good, I'll see you soon, and you're not... Man, you're killing people around you, man. You're not the only one that suffers. You know what I mean? So if you could pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them how you're really feeling, because that's what this thing's about, man. It's talking about how we feel, letting it out, man. If you got a bunch of people in your life that don't want to hear how you feel, fuck those people and get some new people, man. I mean, that's the truth, man. I tell my people well, everything goes all the time and how I feel. And that's how I get better, man. I pick up the book, read some literature, Answer some questions, call people, talk about it, man, and work this thing to the best of my ability. Now, for a really long time, 
I used to try to figure everything out on my own, man. Me and the disease have come up with a good plan. And I kept getting put in the same positions that a lot of you have been put in, man. I've been in detoxes. I've been arrested. Got my ass kicked by myself. You know what I'm talking about? No, no infliction of anybody else. And you look beat up, ain't slept. People are scared to look at you, man. Uh, so I'm going to read a little bit out of this so you can get some truth, and I'm going to tell my piece. Uh, this is chapter 10, more will be revealed. As our recovery progressed, we became increasingly aware of ourselves and the world around us, our needs and our wants. Our assets and liabilities were revealed to us. We came to realize that we had no power to change the outside world. We could only change ourselves. The program of Narcotics Anonymous provides an opportunity for us to ease the pain of living through spiritual principles. We are very fortunate to have had this program before very few people recognized that addiction was a disease. Recovery was only a dream. The responsibility, productive, drug-free lives of thousands of members illustrate the effectiveness of this program. Recovery is a reality for us today. By working the steps, we are rebuilding our fractured personalities. Man. You know, we're not rebuilding our gear and our closet. We're not rebuilding our looks and our shoes, man. Our fractured personalities are being rebuilt, man. Our personalities are being rebuilt. When I showed up here, man, I had the stare, the fucking hand was swinging, the cargoes were on, the socks pulled up to my knees. I was out there playing recovery softball with the white socks pulled up, not the, not the dry fit white socks. I'm talking the socks up to the knees, thinking I'm a gangster on the softball field. In recovery softball, because my personality was beat up and who I thought I was, was was really confused, man. As a fellowship, we love and cherish one another, supporting our new way of life together. As we grow, we come to understand humility as acceptance of both our assets and our liabilities. What we want most is to feel good about ourselves. Today, we have real feelings of love, joy, Hope, sadness, excitement. Our feelings are not old, drug-induced feelings. Man. So my clean date's January 22nd, 2015. Um, it's, a, it's a family disease. You know, when I was using, man, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm going to try not to say man 150 times. I get a little excited, man, and I go and I go and I go. Uh, I think I've got a counter on me in the back. You know, uh, when I was out there using, I knew there was a way out, man. Because I saw my parents, I saw them, they were clean. I went to meetings since I was a little kid, and I was in and out of the rooms with them. Uh, all my uncles, everybody played the part, man. Everybody was drug addicts, bikers. Uh, they just didn't use around me, and I didn't know the difference. You know, when you're growing up, you just see these kind of folks, man, you want to be like them. And that was my story when I was a kid, and, and, and what happened is that for me, man, my disease progressed, and how it progressed is I ran with a certain kind of crowds. I thought I was somebody all the fun stuff that comes along with that, man. And I ended up in the place that I ended up like most people. I'm gonna fast forward um, to when I got clean. So I got clean, I got in, I had a family member, a close family member, friend, uh, pass away and die. Uh, ended up at a funeral. Um, was at this funeral, just doing like we do, man. I'm using the bathroom. People are knocking on the door, trying to get in. I'm doing my thing, I don't feel nothing. Everyone else feels a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I want to cry, can't cry. Uh, we're out in the parking lot afterwards. And I'm sitting there and my folks are there and my good buddies are there. And uh, my folks are like, hey, man, you ain't coming back with us. You know, you're going to stay here and get clean. And I've been making phone calls. You know, I've been calling programs, trying to get in and out. Uh, they wanted me to be in, in the same county, in the same city. It was their fault. I wasn't getting clean, obviously. Um, so now I'm out here. They're saying, you ain't coming back. And I remember... My best friend looked at me and says, hey, man, if you die like my sister died, I'm not coming to your funeral. I remember being like, fuck. Okay, how am I going to continue to get loaded and everyone think I'm all right? You know, my, my, I didn't want to get clean. You know, I wanted the pain to stop and I wanted the consequences to stop to come along with my actions. You know, so I, I decided to stay with my buddy. Uh, he just got married. Uh, I was in the wedding. Uh, I mean, I wasn't there, but I was in the wedding. <laughs> I was a no call, no show, you know how we do when we're using. Um, so he had me stay, I met his wife. Uh, I drank and drank and because I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to clean up. So for me, we were just smoking and drinking the last few days till I got into Hooper Detox. 
Um, and I would wake up on the ground trying to crawl to the bathroom so she didn't see me and think I was a piece of shit. You know how we, you know how we get clean. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm trying to crawl. I'm trying to get to the bathroom so she don't come out. You know, he takes me down, um, takes me on the portal. And I jump on the max. I go to the mentor program. Go pop my head in. I check in. Uh, they tell me to stay clean and come back tomorrow. Uh, I ride the max all day. I think your guys' city's hella cool because you can ride the max for free, and that was cool. Uh, I didn't know you couldn't, and I was doing it illegally. Uh, so my buddy picks me up. He takes me back home. I'm like, hey, man, my uncle lives in Portland. I can stay with him. You don't have to wake up before work to drive to Portland from Vancouver. And, uh, and I remember this really clear, man, because I have rarely told the truth when I wanted to use, you know. Um, I told the truth in all other areas. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, if you ask me if I took your shit and I took it, I'll tell you I took it, you know, um, if you ask me what I thought about you, I'll tell you what I thought about you. So I thought I was this righteous dude, man. I thought I would told the truth all the time. I thought I was super righteous. But when it really counted, I'd lie through my teeth, man. And I remember him saying, is this a good place for you to go? I remember I looked at him and said, it's not. And he said, well, you're staying here and I'm taking you tomorrow. I'm like, fuck, all right. So it was the first time I got, you know, honest. Um, and he woke me up and he took me to my buddy Ryan's Oxford house. And I got out that car and started throwing up. Um, and I, and I thought he was going to be mad at me, man, because he, he was in an Oxford house, and I'm throwing up in front of his Oxford house. And I thought he was going to be upset about it, and uh, he just put his hand on my back said, you done? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, and he took me down to this program, and they're like, what's your clean day? And I'm like, today. And he's like, motherfucker, I thought I told you to stay clean. I'm like, I wouldn't be here if I knew how to stay clean. I don't know how to get 24 hours, man. I don't know how to, I don't know how to stay clean for 24 hours on my own, you know? I got in this program and he told me to get connected. And I met some dudes and we ran around and we went to meetings and they wanted to help. And I remember the first meeting I went to, I went on the bus with about eight people and we went and everyone's laughing, having a good time like people do in early recovery. They have like, you know, 90 days, maybe 60 days, 30 days. And I got a day and they're laughing, having a good time. And we, we go to um, this plaid pantry across from where they do Southeast Serenity. And this guy's like, hey man, get something to eat. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm good. And he's like, all right, all right. And he's like, hey, man, I know how it is. Get something to eat. And I'm like, dog, I'm good. I don't need nothing from you, man. You know, I'm not here because I need help. I'm here because I want to get clean. I can take care of everything else, you know. And he's like, hey, man, I was like you. I understand. He's like, fucking get something, man. I was like, I'll take a water, <laughs> you know, because that's all I could ask for. That's all I was comfortable asking for, man. And uh, so we went, went to this meeting. This guy told me to stand up because he asked for anybody 30 days or less. Uh, I was terrified. I was a tough guy, but I was terrified to stand up from a group of people and, and be honest, you know. I didn't want to look weak, man. I came in this room and I see people looking good, dressing nice. You know, I didn't have nothing. You know, I had a backpack, um, some family members that cared. So I had a lot more than most people when I step back and look at it today. I had a lot, man, you know. Um, but I was scared. I was scared for people to see me for who I was or who I thought I was, you know. So as time went on, I got a sponsor and I got a home group and I used to go to this treatment, man. And this guy used to tell me the truth all the time. He used to piss me off and, it, you know, he, he would tell me day after day the truth about myself. And I would show up and he would ask if anybody wanted to process and I'd put my hand up and I would tell him about women I wanted to be with. And I would tell him about what I was going to do when I got out and people's ass I wanted to kick in the program I was in. Uh, and he would tell me how I wasn't shit. You know, and, and, and that was the truth. And I'll get out of group and everyone would be like, damn, dog, Bobby's fucked up. And I'll say, man, I need to hear it. I would say, dog, I need to hear it because what I'm doing ain't working no more. So I need to hear it. And I'll still show up. Anybody want to process? And I'll be like me. I'll be like, there's this girl. I'm going out to Ben. I'm a seer. She's a hairstylist. So I thought I was cool and shit. Like she works on hair. I'm cool. Um, and he uh, he was like, oh, you think you a player, huh? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I do all right, you know. Uh, and he's like, you think you a big pimp, and huh? You think you can get some ladies? And I look around the room, and I'm like, well, in this crowd, I definitely big pimping. You. you know, I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. And he goes, all right, man, you think you're a player, huh? And he's like, so why don't you leave treatment 
And he goes, go up to the pink tower, take that elevator up 24 stories and go in there and find a woman with a good job and a 401k and tell her you live at the hotel estate, you have a bus pass and a food stamp card and see what kind of pussy you pull, motherfucker. And he said, you're only as sick as yourself, man. And I'm like, I mean, I didn't go, but in my mind, I'm like, come on, dog. You know. And I'm, and I'm leaving, man. He's telling me how sick I am. I'm only as sick as what I attract. And I, and I leave treatment that day. And I'm walking back to the estate, man. And I leave. I'm like, I'm only sick as what I attract. What the fuck's he talking about? You know, because I still think I'm somebody, you know. And I'm like, boom, boom, walking. I hit the soup kitchen line. And I'm, I'm going to be super, I'm going to be super, I'm going to be super nice, man. This homeless lady that looks real rough pops out of line and is like, oh, you're cute. And I'm never like, fuck, this is me, man. This is it. This is who I really am. So I got a half a muffin and a cup of coffee and went back to my room and took a nap, man. And that's how it was. That was early recovery for me. You know, and uh, so I told myself, man, I'm not going to sleep with any women in recovery, you know, uh, until I graduate the mentor program. <laughs> I got to sleep with any women until I graduate the mentor program. And I got some guys, man, and we talked about these platonic relationships with women. Uh, and I was like, I was about it, about it at the time. I went to bed, came back, and was like, didn't fuck her, Bobby. What's up now? And he's like, oh, he didn't, didn't like dab me up. Uh, and I was like, wait, what? Did I, did I fucking win this, dude? I didn't get pussy, and he didn't say good job. Like, I was fucked up, man. I'm like, this dude's mind fucking me, man. He's putting all sorts of, I'm doing what I don't want to do. And he makes it think it's like my idea and I'm showing up like I'm a winner. And he's like, oh, okay. I'm like, it blew my mind, man. I didn't know what was happening. I started changing. It's what was happening. I started changing. You know, and through this process, and, and I'm, 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 man, I can be vulgar with my words. If you're offended, I know we live in Portland. And I know everyone's going to be hella offended. It's my story. That's it. No apology. And, and, and I say that, man, because when I get emotional, I just start going, man. I don't. If you're in the room and you're offended, like, uh, okay. You're in Narcotics Anonymous. Me. I, I guess there's some other means that they might not curse as much. That's what I heard. I'm sure you could find some. They told me to go to a meeting until I found the meetings that I related to. I went to meetings all over, man. Went to meet every single day, all the time. Meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. I used to go to five men's meetings a week. You know? I used to go to men's meetings because I said, you're gonna, what you're going to find there is a bunch of people who want to recover. You go to these other meetings, there's going to be some other stuff going on, man. Go to the men's meetings, you're going to find what you need to find. So I went to a whole bunch of men's meetings, so I found the men I wanted to be around. And that was the truth. You know? So... So I'm not sleeping with women. I'm working on platonic relationships. I graduate the mentor program. I do what I need to do that night. Uh, I don't really feel that good about it. Uh, so some started changing, man. Um, and this is, I'm going to talk a lot about early recovery. Um, some starts changing. Um, I mess with a few other girls. Don't feel that good about it. Uh, I mess with this particular girl. Um, I feel like shit afterwards, man. I'm like, damn. So I went to the mall like anybody would do and bought some shoes. Uh, <laughs> didn't make me feel better. And I was like, damn, what the fuck is going on here? And I'm like, holy shit, I care that I just use that person. <laughs> oh, man. And you know what any good addict in early recovery does when they start caring? They start being like, oh, you're fucking all these girls. You're a piece of shit, dog. Oh, I don't fuck with that. I'm a stand-up dude. I'm not fucking no girls over here no more. I know what it does to them. You're a piece of shit. And I start looking at everybody else, fucking all women, and I start thinking they're all pieces of shit. You know, I forget where I came from really quick. Once we learn a lesson, we use that lesson to look at other people and be like, oh, damn, I can't. How, how could you? <laughs> You know? And I'm, I'm just speaking my truth, man. I'm not saying this because it makes me look cool because I feel like an idiot. Uh, 
so then my process goes on. I start talking to my sponsor and he, he starts telling me like, hey man, you're gonna watch what other people do and you're gonna figure out what you wanna do and what you don't wanna do. So I'm like, all right, man. So I start watching people and I start watching relationships and I see the homeboys that were like, we're going to conventions and they're like, hey dog, I can't go because me and my girl gonna go on a walk on the waterfront Saturday, Sunday morning. And I'm like, I'm like, huh? I'm like, I'm like a bunch of dudes in the this is where we're supposed to build relationships, the ride to the convention, the hotel rooms. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be like that, dude. And I started learning, watching people, man. You know, and after some time, I talked to my sponsor and I'm like, all right, I'm going to start messing with girls. And I start like being super honest, man. I start laying it out there like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing, man. Uh, I'm sleeping with you, but I also might sleep with another girl. And I'm just letting you know. Uh, I, I, hey, we're not exclusive. Like, we're going to go out. We're going to hang out. Actually, I don't even want to sleep with you. So, I, so we went out a handful of times, and, and, and she wanted to sleep with me. And I'm like, hey, I'm just letting you know. One of us might catch feelings, or I might lose interest and stop calling you. And she's like, I'm cool with that. And this is the truth, man. That's verbatim how I was talking. I was trying to be, like, righteous, you know. Uh, and then I slept with this girl, and she's like, I like you. And I'm like, you're right. And then uh, we do this like three, four, five more times. I keep reiterating to her that, hey, this is nothing. I, want, I think that I have to be honest because I don't want to hurt somebody. And I go to Pacna, man, and I'm in this convention. I'm sitting there, and this dude's telling a story. And he says, uh, he says man, I used to be super honest, and I used to tell a woman how it was. And I thought I was being super righteous. And I remember my buddy like turns around from 10 rows back and looks at me and I'm like, damn, this dude's talking about me. And, uh, and he said, what I didn't realize is that these women I was sleeping with, a lot of them have been abused sexually by their neighbors, by their family members. And they were just hoping there was a chance that I would be with them. And I'm like, mother fucker. So something happens in Narcotics Anonymous, man. I want you to hear this. This is really important for me to say. Something happens in Narcotics Anonymous. We show up and we don't have the information. And then we get the information. Now we got a responsibility. Once I started receiving the information, I had a responsibility. I couldn't claim ignorance no more, man. I couldn't say I don't know. Hey, man, I didn't know. Called this girl and I said, I can't, I, we can't meet up no more. And she's like, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm like, it's not right. And then I went on another six months, seven months without messing with any girls until I met the girl I'm with today. Uh, and my first actual girlfriend, I had 20 months clean. Um, but I'm with her today and we had a child two weeks ago. Um, we're clapping for you, baby, because that ain't my accomplishment. She did a lot of work, man. She, we were in ICU for about five, six days, and she sat next to the kid's bed all night, man, and put in a lot of work to make sure our baby's healthy. Um, don't touch him. He's in the back. Y'all can say, say, hi, baby, but don't put your little filthy ass narcotics in all his hands on my child. Uh, I will say that. Uh, I know, I know I'm, I'm getting close to the end. So, so what happens, man, is, is I had a responsibility. I talked to this girl, and it changed, man. Uh, I started talking to the men in my life. I let them all know. I always let the men know what's going on with me. I don't care how dirty it is or what I'm doing or, or what I'm not doing. I'm talking about what's going on. Because if I'm not talking about with them, me and the disease are coming up with a plan. And every time me and the disease come up with a plan, I act out on that plan and I do things that get me into trouble. You know, so when I talk to my people, my people look at me and tell me I'm an idiot. Don't do that. And then I don't do it. <laughs> That's the truth. Or I tell them like, hey, man, I appreciate it, but I think I'm going to do this anyways. You know, and they say, well, call me when it falls apart. Okay. You know, and I've been with this woman now for, for over seven years in, in the honesty and the truth and the relationship we have is, is like other, not, unlike any relationship I've had. You know, the things I tell her and what's going on with me and how I feel. You know, I've been in this relationship and uh, I don't have to call my girl and say, baby, can I go and do this? Oh, we have a baby. We're going to get married. Can I please? That's not how it works, man. For me. I call her and say, hey, do we have plans on Saturday? She says, no. I said, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm just letting you know. That's how it is. That's how it works for us. You know, when I watch relationships in Narcotics Anonymous and I watch people that still had freedom, we're still happy. You know, we get in these relationships and we feel that we have to we have to ask for permission. And this is this is my experience. Maybe that's still cool with you. That's OK. I'm in a relationship where I'm super comfortable doing what I need to do and what I want to do. And she's comfortable doing what she needs to do and what she wants to do. And we have a lot of children at the house. 
we have a lot of kids and, and I still get to do, I still get to go golfing and hang out with my buddies and, and watch football and, and spend time with the people in my life. You know, and it's because these early stages of recovery, I watched other people get in relationships and I watched what they did. And I chose to do those things or not do those things. Another thing that's important for me to say, I don't always go to meetings and come floating out because I heard something spiritual, man. A lot of the times I come to meetings and watch how people act, and I'm like, I don't want to act like that. That's my truth, man. I watch guys come in with years and they're pricks to people. There's newcomers trying to figure something out and they treat them like shit. And I'm like, I don't want to be like that, dude. That's, what, that's the message I got. I don't want to be like that, dude. And that's my truth. You know, and I go to meetings that are spiritual, man. I got a lot of home group, five minutes left. I got a lot of home group members, man, that, that came out here from St. Helens, man. And I appreciate them coming out um, to support. And I got my family in the back, you know, and, uh, and I know when I first got here, um, I'm not here, here, but when I got to Narcotics Anonymous, uh, there was a lot of people that I started walking this walk with, man. And a lot of them have passed away as a result uh, of not talking about what's going on. You know, a lot of them have passed away from putting themselves in positions that were unhealthy without talking about it. You know, a lot of people pass away when they do not need to pass away, man. You know, a lot of people put themselves in positions and lose their life because they're unwilling to talk. about. I don't even know if it's they're unwilling. They just really don't know how. And we don't make it comfortable enough for them to do so. You know, we have a responsibility if we've been here some time to go hug somebody and go sit next to them, get their number, hit them up after the meeting, just say, hey man, just check and see how you're doing. When I first got here, the guys I went to that very first meeting with, when I would come out of my room at the estates and I walked down the hall and I would see them passing, like we just woke up and they just give me like a what's up head nod. I just felt comfortable, man. I'm like, oh, thank God, I know somebody here. You know, because if you're living that kind of lifestyle, things can pop off at any moment. You need to have some homeboys. And that's what I needed when I first got clean to some homeboys. Because I was unsure, man. Y'all look like you're finna do something. You know? And I've been around long enough to find out that most of y'all ain't doing shit. <laughs> you know? Uh, and that's my truth, man. I, I could tell you that, um, you know, my kids are healthy. Uh, my family's healthy. Uh, we're working on starting a, our, our own program, you know, called Back to Basics Recovery. You know, we're working on closing a deal on, on a house out there in, in um, St. Helens right now to get some guys in. Uh, maybe do it a little old school recovery, tell people the truth, even if it hurts their feelings. Um, you know, um, but what I did learn, and it says in our step working guide, is the truth without compassion is abuse. Right. So I don't need to beat someone up and not pick them up, man. It's OK to be like, bro, you got kids. What the fuck are you doing, man? Your baby doesn't need to grow up without a father. It's okay to tell someone that. But it's also okay to follow it up like, hey, man, I understand. I didn't know how to live when I got here. I could help. I don't walk around dropping truth bombs on people, making them feel like shit and then cutting the other way, man. That ain't okay. That's abuse, man. It says in our literature, truth without compassion is abuse. Now, I can say something that don't sound compassionate, but I follow it up with some compassion and make it right. Because I believe when we got here, I'm talking about Narcotics Anonymous. They had to tell the truth for people to stick around. These rooms weren't flooded like they are today. They had to tell the truth, man. They used to tell you to sit down and shut the fuck up. You know, and, and I, I caught the tail end of it, man. I had my parents that, that put me up on game when I got here, and I caught the tail end of it. And the guys that, that helped to guide me, my dad helped guide the guys that guided those guys. So it trickled all the way down, and it's like my responsibility and the men of my life's responsibility. But if you haven't found a group of men that are willing to tell you the truth, you need some new men. If you ain't got some women in your life that are willing to tell you some truth, you need some new women. And I'm going to tell you, when they tell me the truth, it pisses me off. I've hung up on my friends all the time. My friends have hung up on me. That's the real. You know. So I guess the last thing I'll tell you um, before I leave, man, is uh, appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate all the service. Um, seeing Tyler at the door was special for me. I, I know his mom, um, and she's real special to me. There's not many women in Narcotics Anonymous that I, that I talk about what's really going on with me, and she's one of them, uh, and I trust her. You know, so to see, it's to see family members in these rooms getting it uh, is special, man. To see some of these guys that I saw six months ago just coming, coming through the rooms that are still here is special, man. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me.